Hi everyone, I'm Aura Ogorian with ACAP Advisors and Accountants and welcome to another episode of the ACAP Recap where we go beyond the blog to give you quick financial and tax tips. These are topics based on actual questions we receive or they're based on recently hot topics. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the PPP Round 2 or the Paycheck Protection Program Round 2 that recently passed and is now available again to eligible businesses. But before we begin, remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share our videos, and if there's a topic that you want us to cover, make sure you to send us a message or leave it in the comment section below. Hi everyone, welcome back. And today we're gonna to talk about the PPP Round 2, also known as the Consolidated Act, Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021. Now this is an act that was signed by President Trump on December 27th, and it's a $900 billion bill, which is the largest one ever. It's over 6,000 pages, or almost 6,000 pages. And it covers a lot of different areas. It covers additional uh, stimulus checks for individuals, expanded unemployment benefits, but the real big part of it that applies to businesses is a $284 billion that's new money allocated to the PPP program, also known as the PPP2, as some people are calling it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about do you qualify or how do you qualify for these new PPP funds? If you do qualify, how much can you get? And then we're gonna talk about some of the expanded expenses associated with the PPP funds and whether or not those are tax deductible. We're also gonna talk about the new simplified forgiveness method or the amount that was included in this new bill. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the EIDL grant, which is the Economic In Injury Disaster Loan Grant that some of you may have received and how it was applied in the previous PPP round and how it's gonna be applied in this current round. Okay, so how do you qualify for the new PPP2 or round two of PPP funds? First off, it doesn't matter if you got PPP money the first time around, you are still eligible to get PPP money in the second round if you meet certain criteria. So if you received money the first round and you still need money for the second round, you qualify if you have less than 300 employees, uh, have exhausted all of your PPP money during the first round, and the most important part is that you have to have shown or you have to show that you have a 25% decrease in revenues in any one particular quarter. So for example, if you compare quarters first quarter 2020 with first quarter 2019, you have to show a 25% or more decline in revenues to be able to be eligible because they don't want businesses that have benefited or uh, have not lost revenue in 2020 and still get another round of PPP funds. So the next logical question is how much can you get in new PPP funds if you're eligible? Uh, this, the calculation is the same as in the first round. It's two and a half times average payroll, but the maximum amount is now dropped from $10 million to $2 million. In addition, if you're in certain industries such as hospitality or restaurants who've been just completely decimated by this COVID virus and everything that's happened in 2020, those businesses are now eligible for three and a half times average payroll. And this new coronavirus bill added some really cool features to the existing PPP program. So what they did was they expanded the eligible expenses that you're able to use the money for. Uh, in the past, you were only able to use it for payroll, mortgage interest, rent, lease, and utilities. They've expanded that list of expenses to include things like software, accounting costs because a lot of businesses had to incur a lot of accounting costs to help them with the PPP program, uh, supplier costs essential to running the business, and also costs to keep employees uh, safe and in a working environment. Uh, now keep in mind that even with these expanded costs, the total amount of PPP funds used can 
at least 60% or more have to be used on payroll. So even though those expanded expenses are uh, included, you still cannot exceed, or you still cannot exceed 50, 40% or more of those on non-payroll expended uh, related expenses. Now, the other great giveaway, and I say giveaway intentionally of the new PPP program or the COVID bill, is that the PPP expenses are now deductible. In the first round, if you receive PPP funds and you use them for payroll and some non-payroll related expenses, you are not able to deduct those expenses on your profit and loss statement or your tax return. But now the rules have changed where even on your first PPP round, if you receive PPP funds, those expenses are now deductible, which is huge because not only are you receiving money that's not taxable, but you're using that money on expenses that are gonna be deductible. Now, one thing to keep in mind is not this is on a federal level and not all states uh, adhere to this new rule. <clears throat> so, for example, in California, California has outright said money used for PPP expenses are not deductible. So make sure you check with your CPA to ensure if you are using if you are deducting those PPP expenses, see if that same rule applies in the state that you operate. The other two great provisions of this new PPP bill or coronavirus bill is the simplified process for the forgiveness and also how EIDL grants are treated. So let's talk about the first one first. Um, In the first round, they had three forms. The SBA had three forms based on the amount of your PPP loan, whether or not you had a change in, uh, in number of employees, And depending on those two factors, you'd have to use one of three different forms. And if you had a PPP loan of $50,000 or less, you were allowed to use a streamlined form where it was just a where it's just an attestation saying you used the money properly and there was no other questions asked and the loan would be forgiven. Under the new bill, that threshold has been risen to $150,000, which also covers the first round of PPP. So if your PPP loan is $150,000 or less, you can use this new streamlined form that's going to make it a lot easier for many businesses because most of those PPP loans were under that one hundred fifty threshold. Uh, the other cool provision is that in the first round, if you received an EIDL grant, so for example, if you apply for an EIDL loan, that's to the SBA, and while you were waiting for that loan to get approved, you received an initial small grant. Under the original PPP rules, that amount had to be subtracted from the forgiven amount. So if you had $50,000 of PPP loans and you got a $5,000 grant, only $45,000 would be forgiven and that $5,000 grant would now have to be repaid. But now that's been eliminated. If you have an EIDL grant, that it doesn't matter is not going to get reduced from your PPP forgiveness, which again is another huge benefit of this bill.